I'm not big for you. Mm -hmm. I'm big for me. Wow, like, um, because I really thought I was on my way. Only you can stop you. Go for it. Hi, I'm Carrie Murphy, and welcome back to another Inspired Living TV episode. As women today, we are so fortunate to be able to step into so many different roles, from CEO to entrepreneur to motherhood and life partner, and yet sometimes that can just seem so overwhelming. And for some of you, maybe you are a mom, but you feel like you're capable and you want to do so much more in the world. Well, today I have a guest who is really the voice for working mothers across the globe. She is the editor at large for Working Mother Media and a host on a nationally syndicated radio show that really reaches, reaches women across the globe. And today she's gonna to be sharing her incredible tips that will help you create a life of balance, doing what you love, and being the mom that you were put here on earth to do. So, hi Bettina, hello, hello. I'm so excited to sit down with you because I know that there are so many women out there that are watching going, I've been waiting for this, Carrie. Like, <laughs> I, need, I need some more love when it comes to figuring out how to balance motherhood and my dream and my relationships. And you really are that voice for women out there right now. But before we get into that, give us a little background because you have a fascinating background. <laughs> well, it looks like we're just in the nick of time for you. Right, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting my tips in right before she comes. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. It's such Thank an you. exciting time to be pregnant and it's such an exciting time to be starting your family. And I just wish you nothing but the best. Oh, thank you so much. My my background, I actually, um, I, I, you know, the whole being a, the voice of working working women, you know, I've been a working, I was a working girl when I was a child, you know, I've, I've worked my whole life. And um, and I don't know any different than have, than not having to, but but welcoming the balance of, right. of that. You know, when I was a child, I started working at uh, two years old. My sister and I started modeling, and then um, and then we moved to California, and I started doing um, commercials and um, television shows, and uh, I I found my my true niche in voiceover. And my entire life, I've done um, voices for Rainbow Bright, My Little Pony. Oh, Rainbow um, <laughs> Bright, My Little Pony. Like, that's bringing me back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It brings a lot of people back. Yeah. You know, it's the coolest thing because I have fans that have literally grown up with me. Yeah. And they've known, they feel like they've known me my whole life. And, and I feel like I've known them my whole life. You know, a lot, of, a lot of the twists and turns that my career has taken has been partly because they've asked for certain things of me. And it's been really fun. But, you know, Rainbow Bright had um, two albums. And then I started singing on Disney records and singing on film scores, and and um, and I just I really adored um, vocal use of my voice. And, right. And and you have a beautiful voice, by the way. Th thank yeah, you so, so much. Beautiful. Thank you. And I and it's just it's been wonderful, you know. But my whole life has been about balancing school and work, or balancing you know um, multiple career paths and and school, and you know. And then when I graduated, it was almost like oh. Well, I can take on more. You know, my mom's looking at me going, wait, no, I thought, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> you finally graduated, and so you could kind of chill out a bit. But, you know, but that's how, you know, when you are innately um, used to doing something, you, know, you just continue to do it. And I was raised to live a life of service. You know, you needed mm -hmm. to use the gifts that God, that God gave you that made you special, that was, you were blessed with. You needed to use those in a way that would serve people. You're not meant to hide your light under a bushel. Absolutely. You know, so let's say that again. <laughs> You're not meant to hide your light under a bushel, <laughs> right? Right. It's really great. Well, and if you're not serving, then you're then you're kind of you know snubbing God in the face. Yeah, you're you know? keeping. Yeah. yeah, and and you're what you're supposed to do is share. And so, um, so I always felt as though the the harder I worked and the more I did, you know, the more of service I was being, and and that was how it was always framed for me. You know, I had parents who my um, my mom was a teacher. And she got her master's degree um, when my dad was at Harvard Business School. My dad was, um, my dad was, my dad's in the encyclopedia. He was a civil rights um, uh, champion. He was the first black page on Capitol Hill. Wow. Um, right, following the uh, board versus, uh, Brown versus the Board of Education ruling. He was appointed by Earl Warren. And um, he was the first uh, black graduate of the Air Force Academy. And he was a champion of um, civil rights. And he... Uh, so you had like some shoes that you were yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> pretty so, but, powerful. But what I'm trying to say is I was I was raised by examples. Sure. You know, I was I was it was not a whole do as I say, not as I do thing. I was raised 
you know, watching people doing. And, you know, my dad went to Harvard and got his MBA and, and, um, and proceeded to have a, a career as an executive and then, and then continued to be of service in the world of diversity, in the world of civil rights, even while he was, you know, serving as a CFO of a giant company. Mm -hmm. You know, and my mom, you know, was always teaching. She was, I mean, even when she wasn't in, in the official teaching capacity, she was, there were always just kids gravitating to our house who, who needed to learn. And my mom was, you couldn't have a conversation with my, mo with my mom without learning or hmm. being nurtured in some way. It's just innately who she is, and that's her gift, and so she knows it. And so she would, you know, she would take the, the kid whose parents were, you know, having a rough time or didn't have a lot of money or whatever, and she'd bring them with us to things that they maybe couldn't afford to do and that, you know, would expose them culturally to something new. Right. And, you know, it's just kind of how they were. So, you know, all of these things kind of become incorporated into who you are because, you know, you're seeing this example. So that's why, for me, the, the, being a working mom is incredibly important to me because I want my children to see me living in my passion and, and, um, and continuing to, to show them, you know, this is, this is who I am. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, that's, and I do think that's so important. And I think Bettina, there's a lot of people out there that didn't have that example, that didn't have those parents that were great leaders and setting examples. And so when they have children, right, I think, you know, or at least I hear <laughs> that, <laughs> that there's such, you know, there's this mom guilt out there. Absolutely. Of, there is. You know, I have to choose between being there for my children and pursuing my gift, right? right? And really spreading that light and sharing that. What would you say to those women who really feel like they're stuck between that rock and a hard spot or they don't feel like they can do both? Well, first I want to say there are many women out there whose passion is being a full-time mom. And I think that's beautiful. Great. I think it's absolutely beautiful. <laughs> I think it's a very hard job to do. It's a very underpaid and underappreciated job. And more power to you, ladies, because I, you know, I don't know that I. That's something that I could actually excel at as well as a lot of women do. My mom, at certain times in her career, because I was working, she she didn't work a, a, for a lot of years. She didn't work because she had to mother this child who was working. Mm -hmm. And so she was on sets with me and she was a full-time mom to me. And then I had two other siblings. And so, you know, she was, Cause she very, was working, you were working, your sister yeah, was so working. There was all kinds yeah. of balancing happening yeah. there. And, you know, and again, you know, you're watching that balance happening and, you know, and whether you're, whether you're working outside of the home or you're a full-time, you know, mother, you're, you're showing your kids balance. But for the women who feel as though being a full-time at-home mom is not for them, and they would like to get into the workforce or do something different, and they're feeling guilt about that. I think that the guilt is misplaced. I think that mm -hmm. um, if, if you are feeling torn and you're feeling pulled on some level, children are so intuitive. Children are, are straight from heaven, straight from God, they and they yeah. are connected, and they will feel that. And they will, they, if you're starting to resent what you're doing with them because you feel like you should be doing something different, at some level it's going to end up impacting them. So you're best off being true to who you are. Because isn't that what you want for them ultimately? Absolutely. You want them to live an authentic life. You want them to be true to who they are. So if you're not doing that, again, do as I say, not as I do, does not work. It right. doesn't work. It doesn't work. <laughs> Kids will do as you do. They just will. Oh, and so true. Yeah, so you've got to listen to that That voice. Is Anytime I've gone wrong in my life, it's, I, I can look back and say, mm, yeah, ignore the voice. You can't ignore the voice. It's going to Our it, intuition it, is equally, you know, a gift, absolutely. you know, with everything else. And I have six nieces and nephews and two amazing sisters and a mom who's an entrepreneur. And, and I really do see that and understand that kids really are sponges mm -hmm. and that they are going to do what you do, mm -hmm. you know, and they're so intuitive. And it's as women, I love that you said, you know, if you have that calling, if you know that you're meant to do something else to honor that, absolutely, because that really is a gift. And we hear the word balance all the time. And, you know, I don't know if there really is such a thing. Um, I think that balance is a verb. It's yeah, not What a does noun. that mean? Well, it's something that you're constantly doing. It's not something that you're going to achieve. I think when balance is used as a noun, it's it's an unattainable. It it, it makes you strive for some kind of perfection that doesn't. That's exist. not possible. Yeah, right. happiness is is moment to moment choices. You know, mm -hmm. happiness is in what you're creating for yourself. You know, as you move through life, it's not you know some end game. You know, you're in the end game. You're this is the end game. You, to enjoy the moment and be present in the moment, and to to live who you are supposed to be living as. Mm -hmm. And so I feel as though the balance is more about um, 
making sure that you're feeding all aspects of who you are and that you're giving and you're giving because the more you, I mean, we hear it's, it's such a cliche, but the more you give, the more you get. But honestly, it's true though. It's, it's true. a cliche for a reason. Yeah. yeah. So like when you're, when you're, when you're giving, when you feel that you need to be giving and you, and you're, you know, and you're allowing yourself to receive, that's all a balance and it's all a fluid motion and it continues to happen. It continues to happen. So it's not, to me, it's not something that, that you're trying to attain. It's something that you're constantly doing and you just get better at it. The more you do it, just like working out, you're flexing different muscles. Right. And the more that you are working at balancing your life and balancing the things that you prioritize as important to you, the, the happier you're going to be. Yeah. And to me, the goal isn't necessarily balance. I, the goal is to balance so that you can be happy. It's really about like finding your inner peace, I think, too. Yeah. And just really connecting to spirit and, and finding that that peace within yourself. Mm -hmm. And that is different for everybody. Absolutely. And as long as you really are connected and, you know, I think as women, we talk so much about giving. And I think most of us are innately, we're givers, yes. right? That's within our DNA. But you said something that was <laughs> really powerful and just as important is that you have to be willing to receive. Mm -hmm. You really have to be able to ask. And I think whether you're a mom or not, with women who are CEOs and you've been a top executive and has, you know, started a, a you were <laughs> like from, from zero to I, 25 million. I never million. get through my whole story before I get derailed about other things. No, but yeah. But, yeah, but I read up on you, I know. Um, yeah. so, so you've had a lot of different roles from talent to executive to mom. And, you know, I think probably each one of those roles was at that perfect time in your life. And you just had it make that decision to find what that balance was for you. My path has never been this path of obvious choices <laughs> at all, but it has been looking back on it's such a natural progression. And, and again, like I said, when I listen to my intuition, everything goes exactly as it's supposed to. When I stop listening, that's when I stay somewhere too long mm -hmm. or I don't clear something that's crappy out of my life. And, and that's what I'm talking about when you're saying, when I say, you know, you need to be willing to receive. Well, in order to do that, you've got to clear out you got to make room too. So if there's stuff that's not working, if there's stuff that, that, you know, okay, I've learned that lesson time to move on, move on, you know, that you've got to, that's part of the balance. You know, there's, there's not an, a, a, a finite amount of, 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 of space. You know, you, you have to be, you have you to have make to, choices. You have to make choices yeah. and you have to balance. And, and, you know, and for the moms who are out there like, okay, this is all great. This is all airy, spacey, whatever. But you know, how do you, how do you make sure that you get to work out, that you get to, you know, to spend time with your husband that you, you know, the actual nuts and bolts of it. Yeah. That again, that's prioritizing. It's being organized. It's, and it's part of that flexing the muscle of balance, you know, and we'll, receiving help and receiving help. Think. Oh, I'm all about yeah. asking for help. Yeah. Like don't, you don't have to do it all. <laughs> yes. I mean, there is an S on my chest, but I try to cover it up as often as possible. And I have to use it if, if it's not right. necessary. You can take the cape off every now and then. <laughs> yeah. Use it as an accessory. No, I am yeah. all about help and it takes a village. It takes, make sure that you have your support system. I'm sure you, that you do. Yes. But like today we, you know, we're doing this and my, my son unexpectedly got sick and, you know, threw up in the car. And so, <laughs> so he had to turn around and come back. And so he's upstairs now when he was supposed to be out of the house. And so my mom is going to go get my daughter from camp. And, you know, there it's like, and go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, you got to be flexible. You got to have a positive attitude that, okay, it's going to work out. You know, I, I think, you know, you can't come from a place of, oh, my God, stressed out. You know, I had it organized so perfectly that, you know, now it's all falling apart. Well, mm -hmm. no, there was never that moment in this day. I was like, all right, so who do I call? What do I do? How do I, you know, how do I manage this? And, and, and you know, we were, we were prepping. We were talking before the interview, and I said, well, I just need to go upstairs and, and check on my boy and make sure that he's okay because I knew I couldn't sit here and have this conversation with you if I didn't know right. that he that was, he was good. doing okay. Yeah. yeah, so it's, you know, it's knowing what your priorities are, knowing what's important to you, and and then being organized enough and flexible enough to just make it all work. And it's not always all going to work. It's just not. You're going to have those that. days. Yeah, there's no perfection in this. And nobody's got a scorecard and, and judging you. And make, And you know what? Those women who are, shame on you. Because we have no business judging each other like that. That's right. It's not right. Mom or not mom. I think women, we can be so hard on ourselves, but we can also be so hard on each other. Yes. And it's not, it's not our... It's not our job. No. It's not our job to judge. There's someone much greater out there who could do that at the end of the day. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And you know what? None of us are infallible. And God yeah. knows I'm not. And I, you know, and I <laughs> I, I get reminded about it all the time. And if something <laughs> comes out of my daughter's mouth, I'm like, oh my God, I let that slip. Right. You know, <laughs> Where did she get that? I don't know. <laughs> no, 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 honey. That's not what I meant to say. Right. It's a different verb. Yeah, but you know, that's, but that's, you know, you've got to cut yourself some slack. you got to cut everybody else some slack. Mm -hmm. And that's part of it. It's not some kind of perfection. 
perfection that you're going after. And I think that, you know, so many women, like they strive for perfection. They strive to get everything right. And, they're, and when, when you give yourself permission to not be perfect, yes. then everything else just has much more ease to it. And you could show up more authentically and in your space. And, you know, with the roles that we have today, Bettina, of all the options that we have, you know, I was just watching a great interview with you and you were talking about pay inequality and that's a hot topic right now yes. and I know it's it's an odd segue but I think it's something that as women that are watching whether you own your own business or you're in a corporate space and you're saying you know what I'm noticing that I am just as capable and just as driven yep. and now and I am a mom and I'm trying to do it all and I'm not getting paid the same as my counterparts or I don't feel like I'm being valued in my space right how can women help close that gap because I know we are a big part of that problem. Yeah, well, you know, it, there's there are a lot of components to why the gender wage gap persists, and it's 2015, and women are still, on average, making 78 cents to every dollar that a man is making. Which, again, blows my mind that it, in 2015 we're dealing with this. It's a little out of control. And you'll hear, <laughs> you'll hear a lot of people talking about the numbers and, you know, playing with it. Well, you know, this and that, and, and that's fine. It, even, if the, even if the number is, is off and... There, there's, there are no studies that exist that state that there is no gender wage gap. So until we get to a place of absolute equality, mm -hmm. there's a problem. So what we can do as women is, you know, there was a great study done by Yale University where they had two resumes, and one said John and one said Jennifer. They're identical, and they both had the same last name. Um, John was offered on average $4,000 more um, than Jennifer was. This is the starting salary base. So I would say one of the first things that you can do is, is change your name. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Change your name. <laughs> one of the first things you can do is when that first offer comes in out the gate, negotiate it. Mm. Negotiate it up. Because at the end of the day, whatever you started out at is your baseline. So as you get those incremental raises that you need to go ask for, um, you're going to be starting at a higher place. Um, the second thing yes, is... so many women will not negotiate. They just take what's given to them. Woohoo! I got a job offer. I got right, a job. Yes. Right, well, if you And never mind asking for a raise, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. But you need to know your market value. Research. Talk to people. Mm, ask people. So good. Use the internet, but the internet doesn't necessarily know everything. You right. need to look around and see, okay, what are actual people in this space doing the same thing as I'm doing? What are they making? Mm -hmm. And um, and then, you know what? You, you're more than welcome to be making the, the top line of that. There's no right. reason why you can't. Can't. I would say you don't ever get what you don't ask for. Exactly. If you don't ask, the answer is no. That's right. <laughs> Good stuff. All right. Absolutely. So, and that's another thing is you know your male counterparts are in there asking for that raise, whereas a lot of women and they're seem, negotiating their contracts. Yes. Yeah. And a lot of women we see are are absolutely hoping that they're going to be bonused on their merit or they're going to be rewarded on their merit and they're going to be like, well, my my accomplishments speak for themselves. And they're not actually walking in that office and saying, look, I, it's time for me to be acknowledged. It's time mm -hmm. for me to get a raise. Whereas their, their male counterparts are, are absolutely doing that. All doing the time. that. Yes, yeah, they're doing that. Great. So that's another thing. And, and, you know, and when you have that conversation um, with your boss or the powers that be, you need to make sure that it doesn't become clouded with personal I I issues. You don't need to tell them, I, you know, my daughter's on her way to college, or I'm going through a, a tough divorce, or my mom's in the hospital. You don't need to tell them why you need the money. It's, it's not about that. It's about having an organized, measurable list of accomplishments mm -hmm. that you can say, look, this is what I've done, and this is why it's time. And this is the increment within which I would like to see my pay increase. And th that's how you, how you need to make sure that you stand up for yourself. And... The more women that do that, the more you're going to see, you know, the inequalities start to shrink. Because right, we get emotional, <laughs> believe it or not, right? <laughs> and, you know, that's a beautiful thing about it women. Is a beautiful and, and, thing. and it's not something that we need to be ashamed of or hide. But at the same time, there are places in life where it's appropriate and there are places in life where it's not. Sure. And, um, and there, are, there are great reasons why we are emotional and why we need to be in order to balance out families and in order to balance out the world. Right. Um, but when you're in that office asking for the raise, it's not the place. Yeah. Really good advice. I like that Thanks. because I do, I do see it even in the entrepreneurial space of women really owning their value. Yeah. And because we want to give so much, because we we want to use our gifts, right? We're like, oh, I'll do it for free, or you know what? Or you know, I'll I'll charge yeah. this because I just want to serve. Yep. But you have to be able to provide 
for your family. And, and a lot of women now are breadwinners. Like it's, oh, there's such huge a huge amount. shift, right? Mm-hmm. Of women who are actually going out there and bringing home the income and we're capable of, of doing that. And that's a whole nother conversation, right? Of that oh, yeah. kind of change in roles. Do you see that a lot with the women that you interview? Because I know you interview so many moms out there that they really are, you know, really the breadwinners of their homes. Oh, yeah. We just did a whole um, a whole article about that, how a lot of women have become the unexpected. It was not planned. It was not part of, you know, when they got married, it was not part of what they were planning on doing. Yet they become the unexpected breadwinner and how they feel about that and how the man feels about it. And, mm-hmm. and there, there are a whole lot of shifts taking place um, with the millennials and the way the things that they prioritize is important and it's interesting because the american economy and the Ameri- american corporation is starting to take to take notice and you're right. starting to see more companies offer work flex mm-hmm. and um and the telecommuting and the, the paid maternity leave and paternity leave paid family leave um these things are important and you know and better benefits um things like child care on site you know for the larger companies and right. and uh and and these things matter to a lot of very talented people and when it's funny when it's, it all comes down to, to the fact that what benefits the American family does benefit the American economy. And the more Absolutely. the corporations right. wake up to that in their policy making, the more we're going to see. And at the end of the day, you know, it's all about leadership. You know, mm-hmm. I'll, I've, I've, I've said it before, you know, diversity is a leadership issue. And when it comes to diversity with any minority, when you're talking about racial or you're talking about gender differences, you, you have to have people in places of leadership in order to see policies change so that the people coming up can, can change the numbers mm-hmm. and we start to see the inequality decrease. So, so good. What are the three tips that you would give that mom who's watching right now, who feels out of balance, who feels like they haven't really stepped into using their gifts uh, to the best and highest use possible? What would you say to them? What are the three things that they can really do to help just find that balance for themselves um, and their family? <clears throat> I would say the first thing that you need to do is is listen listen to yourself. Get quiet and listen to yourself. You know, I, you know, you see so many people say, oh, do you meditate? You know, it, like it's, it's this kind of, you know, hokey pokey thing. <laughs> I, meditation's a part of my life and there's a reason for that because I need to center myself and listen to myself because if I don't, I see things go off course. Sure. Um, and I feel as though, even if it's not meditation specifically, but even if you just carve out some time, if it's five minutes in the morning, five minutes in the evening, that's 10 minutes of just sitting with your own thoughts. And then afterwards, just write down some of the things that, that matter most to you, the things that are that you feel are out, out of balance, that, that the things that you feel are, are uh, most important to you, and start to prioritize mm-hmm. you know, based on those things that are going on inside of you. Um, the second thing I would say is um, be easy on yourself. Don't be hard on yourself. Rome was not built in a day. Don't expect <laughs> change to happen overnight. Change takes a lot, significant change. Such a good reminder. It takes time. Yeah. It takes time and it takes consistency. So, you know, I, that's why I say five minutes in the morning or five minutes in the evening because we're not, because you can't consistently say, I'm going to meditate for an hour a day. Right. <laughs> well, yeah, and that's going to last Well, then when you days. don't, then you feel guilty. I right. didn't do it's it. Like, right. It's like, you know, I'm going to go on a liquid diet right. for, you know, <laughs> 60 days. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Right. So, so be realistic about that type of thing and, and, and try to create new habits for yourself. And that happens gradually over time. So consistency is super important. Be easy on yourself. Um, and give yourself the time to make the changes. And then also, you know, pat yourself on the back. Mm. Uh, you know, reward yourself. May, you know, give, when, it's just like with kids. You know, kids learn more from praise than they learn from negativity. Sure. And, and so do we. Mm-hmm. You know, so if you see, your, if you see that you've, you look back on your list of goals that you had, you know, 30 days ago, and you see that you accomplished something, pff, yeah, go get that pair of shoes. That's right. Score. <laughs> Celebrate. <laughs> Do something. Yeah. that. Yeah, and now every time you wear those shoes, you're like, yeah, I did something I for did th- me. That's you right. know, And there's a reason. You know, it wasn't just, you know, I dropped that money. It was I did something for me, and I'm closer to where I want to be. Because that's, it's about that. It's not about actually, you know, that. The that next thing. thing. Yeah, yeah. It's about what's right here and enjoying this the process so yeah I, that's such good tips such good Thanks. stuff <laughs> so I want to end with a question that I ask all my guests which is what does inspired living mean to you mm, inspired living um, that's a great question thanks <laughs> inspired living means to me waking up every day excited about your life 
you know, and ex excited about the possibilities and, and, you know, what you can do and, and who you can meet and where you can go and, and what, you know, what new things you can discover I about yourself and the people you that. love. You yeah. know, it's, I just, you know, I, I that, that phrase is such a cool phrase, inspired living, because, yeah. you know, you want to, you want to be in. You want to be inspired, and you want to be an inspiration to others. Mm -hmm. That to me has always been. They really like what, go together. Yeah, yeah, and that's what gets me like excited. Is you know, I I want something to fire me up, and I want to fire somebody else up. You know, and even if it's just my dog in the morning, right. you know, I just you just want to you know you just want to create that in other people. It's that's what that's it's the juice of life. You know? And you definitely have that beautiful energy that just permeates a room. Bettina, oh, thank, thank you, you for sharing your wisdom with us. And if people want to connect with you or find out more about you, how do they do that? Um, you can find me on Twitter or Facebook at Bettina Bush. Um, and uh, I have a website, BettinaBush.com. Um, you can also watch me on TheMotherhoodCorner.com. And, um, yeah, I would love to hear from anybody who wants to share with me. Wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank and you. thank you for watching this Inspired Living interview. If you want more inspiration, and come on. I know that you do. Just head over <laughs> to my website, inspiredliving.tv, where you can find many more interviews and content that can support you in truly using your gifts to the very best and highest use possible. And remember to keep dreaming it, living it, and being it. Until next time.